Hello and welcome back to the show. I am about to hop on to Morning Tea Live on Instagram and we are going to talk about today's topic, which is I've healed. Now what? Some travel reflections for you all as I come back from my trip from Paris, Miami, and an added bonus to New York. So let me hop on live. Let's see if my phone will stay up. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Morning Tea Live. Happy Wednesday. Cheers. Thanks for being here today. I'm so excited to get back to this. It's been two weeks that I was off, and this will be the first Morning Tea Live, yeah, in about three weeks. So I just came back from Paris and then Miami and New York. Paris was the only place that was actually planned. And then my friend got sent to Miami for work. And so we just added that on. And then while I was in Miami, I was like, well, I'm already on the East coast. I haven't seen my family in seven months. Let's just hop on over to New York. And my dad was like, yeah, I'll use my points. Like we were doing some teamwork to make it happen. So I ended up in New York for about three nights to see my family, which was so nice. And then just got back home on Sunday and then slept for 13 hours and still feel like I could sleep more. So really, really good to be back and to be back with morning tea, back on recording these pod episodes for you all. And so much I want to talk to you guys about today. Oh, I'm excited. All right, let's do a couple breaths just to ground. So wherever you are, maybe putting hands on your heart, taking a deep breath in and release. Let's do two more. One. And two. Maybe sigh it out. If that feels good for you. And just taking a moment to notice how your body's feeling. Notice how your heart is feeling, how your chest, your abdomen, your legs, your neck, your head, your toes, just noticing how every part of the body is feeling right now. a moment to honor this present moment that we are all here together breathing moving living and what a gift that is and slowly coming back so I first just want to acknowledge that when I talk about life being a gift I know that when you're in survival mode it may not always feel that way there were many times in my life where life didn't necessarily feel like a full gift. It felt like a little bit of a nightmare. (laughs) And that's because I had so much unprocessed trauma. My anxious attachment and abandonment wound were so strong. I was suffering from BPD symptoms that I didn't even know I had. So life doesn't always feel like a gift when you're in survival mode. But when we do the work to rewire our nervous system out of survival mode and feeling safe to just be in the present, life gets to feel like such a gift. So just wanted to kind of put that disclaimer there because I know I talk a lot about life being a gift and that's just a representation of where I'm at in my nervous system that I really feel that way. And as you guys know, I had my childhood leukemia where I almost lost my life. And so I've always had this sense of like, oh, life was this gift that I almost didn't have. But in terms of how I was actually feeling internally, a lot of that gratitude and that presence was blocked from my trauma. And so now after doing this healing work of kind of unblocking that, I'm just able to access that level of gratitude and presence that much more fully and deeply. And we have to meet ourselves where you're at. So if you're at a place where you feel like life is not feeling like such a gift, I want to honor that too, because I've totally been there. (laughs) So I want to talk to you guys today just about some reflections that came up during my trip, during my travel, because I think traveling and getting out of your normal day-to-day life 
brings up a lot. It can bring up a lot of exciting things. It can bring up a lot of challenges. It can require your nervous system to have this level of flexibility where you are showing your body you're safe, even while not being in your day-to-day -day routine. And I think the theme that came up for me this trip that I want to talk to you guys about is what happens when you've healed a lot of your wounds and processed a lot of the trauma, because so much of the work I talk about is the actual healing part. And now I'm in this place personally in my own healing journey where I really, I can say confidently that I really processed and healed so many of my wounds that were continuing to dominate my life. And so why do we do this healing work? It's to get to this place, this place where I'm at now, where we can focus on presence. We can focus on expansion. We can focus on feeling safe to actually create the life that we want to live. And I think that there's a safety and attachment that can come with the healing journey where we can almost use healing as an excuse to not show up or not do the scary things. Cause we're like, Oh, we're still healing that. Or, Oh, we're still working on that. And I don't believe that we need to be healing forever. I believe that we grow forever, that we evolve forever, but there's a point where we have actively processed a lot of the wounds, the trauma, the childhood attachments um, that gets activated. Like we've processed a lot of that and can now get to a place where we're just focused on not healing anymore. And so the title of this is I've healed. And now what, because what is, <laughs> what comes after the healing, what comes after getting to this place of getting your nervous system out of survival mode. And so for me, this came out really strongly in this very like consistent, cohesive way during my trip, because I didn't have any like major profound breakthroughs or shifts or transformations. The profound shift that I experienced was just further integrating, further celebrating, further experiencing life on the other side of healing your trauma. That was the profound shift because so much of what I've talked about in the past is like these profound shifts that I've had, these breakthroughs that I've had in my healing, which there have been many. And then I got to this trip and normally travel can make me really ungrounded. It can make me really um, moody where it's like, I'm riding this high and then I'm exhausted and like go down to this low of just my inner child coming out and just being like, Oh, I need to go to sleep. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> and although there was a lot of that where I was like, wow, I'm exhausted. It never got to this point where I would have, you know, like my temper tantrums, <laughs> like my inner child would be just fully taking over. It was more of just like, Oh yeah, I'm tired and I'm safe to give my body rest. And just like really feeling this, this steadiness, this constant level of groundedness that I don't think I've ever really experienced before. And so even with the trip, I went to Paris to meet my coach, to have this magical VIP day. Of course, I was riding the high of that. It was such a beautiful, perfect day. And I was able to just keep moving. It wasn't like I was trying to hang on to that high and not want to come down from it. It was more of just like, oh, we're experiencing these highs and it's beautiful. And then we're moving, we're moving forward and we're moving to the next day and we're present there. And it's not this like attachment that I used to have where it was like clinging to the highs or clinging to the lows. Cause that's a form of dysregulation where your body's not feeling safe to just be on level ground, be in the present. And so when your body feels safer to have to hang on and attach on to these highs and lows, you're never fully getting to just feel enough. Like it, 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 you're never feeling just like, oh, the present moment is enough because you're just constantly searching for that high or that low. So with Paris, it was yeah, it was this anticipation of meeting my coach who I've been working with very closely for two years now. And <laughs> I told her, I was like, I'm either going to have 
this like really emotional reaction where I'm just going to like ball my eyes out when I see you, or it's just going to feel so normal. Like it's going to just feel so natural and organic and like no big deal because we already know each other so well. And that's exactly what it was. And I was reflecting on that. And I was like, I think a lot of my like big reactions or my big emotional reactions, like I think there was some level of attachment to that in terms of fantasy because fantasy was a really big protector of mine and so I would fantasize about this like big like you know like movie scene moment and like that's how I used to live my life was just like wanting everything to be this like grand movie (laughs) and now it's just like oh like we're good we're here we're present we're safe like And it just felt so natural. We ran into each other in the elevator and we hugged and we were happy to see each other. And it was just like totally normal and totally natural. And I think it was really reparative for me because it's showing my body, like you don't need to have these huge, big, climatic, like, you know, movie scene moments in order for life to feel really meaningful, in order for life to just feel beautiful as it is. And so that was really nice to be able to just feel that and then just have such a beautiful day together. And that beautiful day probably would not have happened if we didn't do a lot of the heavy healing in our relationship before that, because I have been very anxiously attached to my coach and something I was talking about with a client yesterday in session, because she's more avoidantly attached is this idea that we feel so much shame around having needs because our adult minds are like, oh, you shouldn't have childlike needs if you're an adult. But those childlike needs are little you trying to get their needs met that they've been trying to get met since childhood that have been unmet. And so if you're an adult and you're constantly shaming yourself for having these needs, you're never gonna be able to meet them. And so there had to be this level of surrendering to my relationship with my coach of fully surrendering of like, little me has a lot of needs. I am very anxiously attached to you. I need you a lot. And I had to be with the shame that came up with that. And by fully surrendering and allowing myself to attach on, we've now gotten to this place where I've been able to come home to myself and build secure attachment in a way that I've never experienced before. And I talk a lot about this because I am um, offering a new program soon that will be announced very shortly for single people. And I've talked a lot about how when I was single, I would always pride myself of being this like really strong, independent woman who didn't need anyone, blah, blah, blah. But when I was actually getting honest about what that time looked like, I spent a lot of time dysregulated. Like, yeah, I could do things alone. Yeah, I had this sense of self, but I still was grasping. I still was numbing out with TV and eating and all my addictive behaviors. And little me was still so activated when it came to romantic relationships and close relationships. And the public eye couldn't see that, right? People who knew me, even just my friends, my colleagues, they don't see that because that attachment wounding shows up specifically in romantic relationships, because that is the relationship that mimics that child parent relationship, which I know again, sounds weird because you're not dating your parent, but it's that same level of this is my primary attachment in childhood, which is a parent. And then as an adult, it becomes your partner. In my case, I wasn't dating. And so my mentor became my primary attachment. She became like a mom to me. And so, and it was really just like a beautiful full circle because this conversation with my client yesterday, she told me, she was like, you're this maternal figure for me. And I still have so much avoidance around like fully leaning in. And we talked a lot about like fully surrendering and leaning into this therapeutic relationship and allowing me to be that mama bear for her and reparent her so that she can eventually get there to herself. And that's what I had to do as well. I had to surrender to the fact that like, okay, I need a mama bear. I need someone to reparent little me and to help me learn how to parent myself. And by just honoring those needs and being with the shame that came with that and knowing it doesn't actually have to mean anything about you other than we all have unmet needs from childhood because we're human. 
we were able to meet those needs that much more fully, which allowed me to come home to myself to build secure attachment, where now my relationship looks a lot different, where yes, my mentor will always be this like maternal figure for me. She'll always be one of my main attachments because we have a really close, beautiful relationship. And I feel that much more safe in my own attachment with myself. And so that dynamic has shifted a lot in just such a really profound, amazing way. Oh, it's just amazing. It really is. And so now that we've done a lot of that healing work, it was just this experience of being present together, of enjoying Paris together rather than me being a graspy little baby with her. And I don't say that in a, like a mean way to myself. I say that as that used to be our dynamic where I was a graspy baby with her. She had to reparent me. (laughs) And then we're at this place where now we were relating from our adult selves, like me as an adult showing up as if it's like an adult with their adult mother figure, like it's just different. And it was so much more enjoyable. And so We really focused on a few different themes of the day. We focused on um, money and abundance and how I have put people and things on pedestals before because the root of that, it all goes back to the same place of fear of abandonment, fear of not belonging, fear of being left out. And so when I would put things or people or money or luxury on pedestals, it was the sense of me not feeling like I was belonging unless I was in that world. And so we had to do a lot of work around my belief that I can belong and I can just not give away my power and I can stand in my power without needing those things to feel included, to feel like I'm belonging. And so buying that Louis Vuitton wallet that technically I could afford, but also it was a bit of a stretch And we had a conversation about that. She was like, was that actually needed? Was that impulsive? Like we really explored it. And we came to this conclusion that like, it really did feel aligned because it almost felt like it was this initiation into this next level for me. It was like a symbol. We even named her Athena or naming her Athena because it's this like powerful woman era that I've entered. And we, we talked about how that was kind of the symbol for not putting designer things on pedestals or not putting money on pedestals and just feeling enough within feeling powerful enough, just as I am, that I don't need those things to feel a certain way. And that goes back to internal safety, internal power, rather than needing it externally. So we talked about money. We talked a lot about my, um, am I going to fuck it up? Solar plexus or sacral solar plexus. Yes. Solar plexus, confidence, personal power, the, the yellow chakra. Am I remembering that correctly? Solar plexus. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes I get them confused. Sacral solar plexus. I'm pretty sure it's solar plexus. Um, we talked a lot about my solar plexus because my mentor channeled this thing from this past life where I had my power be taken away by a man. And I was like locked in this room and had all this past life trauma where my power was taken away. And so in the present life, I've had a lot of issues with my bladder, with um, just like different issues down there and really wanting to heal my relationship with that area. And so we did a little Reiki. We did a little bit of communicating with my bladder. I always thought that my bladder was kind of messed up because of the chemo that I had when I was little. And I think that's part of it. And another part of it we realized was associated with my attachment, everything's attachment, literally everything goes back to attachment with this sense of like needing to overgive and, um, yeah, this sense of abandoning myself and feeling like my bladder's holding on to so much and it's gripping and it's gripping. And it's like, what happens if it just feels safe to release and not hold so much. And that's, it goes back to like me learning how to not abandon myself and abandon my needs and bleed out for other people, which I've done my whole life. And especially in this nature of this work, I've had to learn how to do that. You know, I've had to learn how to not do that so much more intentionally. And then my friend and I did this like flower shedding ceremony thing where 
um, you basically, like we asked it a question and then as it starts to like, say you take this rose, right. And you're like brushing it up against your body. And then when she got to my bladder and she was like brushing it up, all the petals started falling. And she was like, I've never seen this happen before. And it was just like falling and falling. And this mantra came to me as she was doing it. And I was like, bladder, you're safe to not overgive. And then my friend looked at me and she was like, that's exactly what I was going to tell you to say. And it's like, we were just in sync about it. it was just such a wild moment. And yeah, it's just a lot about further deepening and integrating this processing, this healing work that we've done. So really the whole trip was this reflection of simply integrating. Like it wasn't this like, oh, we've revealed all these new things. Like, yeah, there was some more clarity around my bladder or clarity around um, my solar plexus issues, like more clarity around um, past life trauma with power. Like we definitely had more clarity, but it was all tying into the same themes that we already knew. And so this was just a opportunity to further integrate, to go deeper and deeper and deeper into those layers and to actually just be able to reap the benefits of all the hard work and to just enjoy it, to just be, to just feel grounded. I've never, ever, ever gone home to New York and left feeling as grounded as I did. Normally when I go home, it, I get triggered. It like, it doesn't feel as grounding because New York represents so much of my old self. It represents so much of my old connections, my old ways of relating to the world. I mean, New York City in general can be a very ungrounding place. Like I've always gotten a little bit ungrounded, triggered, just like disconnected from myself when I've gone back home. And being with family can do that to you, right? Like we love our family. And also I'm such a different version of myself than, than I ever have been with my family before. And learning how to relate as this new version of myself can feel scary sometimes or challenging because it's new territory. And this was the first time where I was like, holy shit, like, I just feel okay. Like, I feel grounded. I feel able to just relate from my authentic self and like speak my truth and speak my voice and like not get small and stand in my power. And it was just perfect timing because my mentor and I had claimed this as like my powerful woman era where I'm really taking back my power that I've given away in past lives and this life. And now that I've healed enough to feel safe to do that, that's what's next. It's further integrating, further deepening, further expanding into my power and really getting clear on what that looks like for me. Cause that looks like it looks a little bit differently for everyone, depending on what you want for your life, what you want in terms of your vision, how you want to feel. And I've claimed some really big things for this year to the universe. Like I have a really big goal that I'm working towards that I'm going to keep private for now, but it's something that feels insane, but I'm, I'm going for it because I'm like, why the fuck not? And I want to show myself that I can fully, fully believe in myself. And so I guess the whole theme with all of this, the whole point of all of this is when you're in the thick of doing really deep, heavy trauma healing, nervous system healing, attachment wound healing, and it feels like things are never going to get better. Things feel like you're just going to be suffering with the same symptoms, the same feelings forever. And then you're like, what am I doing all this for? I'm now on the other side of that. And I'm like getting to know this new version of myself. And it's just the most surreal experience. Like I can't even put it into words, but it's so important to share because if you're in that thick of it, like I was, it's just a reminder to keep going, like to keep committing to you, to keep choosing you, to keep breathing, to keep taking it one moment at a time and just knowing that like on the other side of that, you're going to meet this version of yourself where you're relating more through your expansion, your power, your magic, your joy, 
versus relating through your brokenness, your sickness, your stuckness, your trauma. And we all have different timelines. We all have different, you know, ways that this unfolds. I didn't know that I was going to get to this place when I would get to it. I had no idea, but I kept going until it shifted until my shame shifted until my attachment wounding shifted until my survival mode and my fear shifted. And it doesn't mean that stuff doesn't come up. Stuff comes up, stuff comes up every day, but it's how able are you to just move through it, to feel safe, feeling your feelings as they come up to move through whatever the universe throws at you and to be able to come back from these two weeks of travel and say, there weren't any giant breakthroughs. There weren't any huge shifts. There weren't any like groundbreaking news I had to share with you that in and of itself <laughs> is so profound is so telling of there not needing to be any more major breakthrough shifts. That doesn't mean there won't be any more in the future, but I anticipate that it will just be a deepening of it, a further integration of it and really breakthroughs in terms of like breaking into the new, the next level of expansion rather than like revelations around my past or my childhood, right? That's not to say they won't come up, but it's more of just representative of like, I've gotten to this place where all of that hard work came to fruition, came into the physical and shifted at a perfect time where I can then just enjoy, like enjoy the fruits of the labor and just enjoy, be present, be present in Paris, be present in Miami, be present in New York. And I really didn't have any alone time. I was with people the entire time. And I, I am someone that needs alone time. And even just that, right. Like being able to stay grounded throughout that, being able to, you know, tell my friend like, Oh, I'm, I need to take some time for myself. I'm going to go get a massage, like to be able to honor my needs, to be able to stay consistent with my MCJ, like all of these things, and just simply being like, that's the point of all of it is just to be able to enjoy life and feel how you want to feel and stay present and grounded throughout all of it like that. That's the whole point. And so to be able to get to this place where it was as simple as that, like I just fully was able to enjoy the trip and not live in my head. That is everything. And that is a type of freedom that I had never experienced before. And I want everyone to experience that level of freedom. I want everyone to feel like they have a flexible and safe enough nervous system where they can go travel and come back and move through life and move through changes where it doesn't feel so heavy, where it doesn't feel so triggering, where it doesn't feel so ungrounding. I want you to be able to just live your life and do whatever you want to do in your life and create whatever you want to create in your life and feel how you want to feel in your life. And so if you are listening to this and you've been feeling defeated or you've been feeling like, oh my God, this healing journey is a lot. It is a lot. And it is so fucking worth it. So just one step in front of the next, stay in the present one step at a time, one breath at a time, meet yourself where you're at, have so much gentleness, so much compassion for yourself. Give yourself so much credit because you're doing the work that most people in this world will not do and just keep going, just keep swimming. As Dory says, <laughs> just keep swimming. I just finished that book. Um, it ends with us. And I love that part where it's just like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And really just like how beautifully written it was around breaking these generational cycles of trauma, because this work is fucking hard, but it is so, so worth it. So yeah, that's all I really have for you guys today. Um, again, like there's nothing crazy to report back. I think one of the coolest parts was that during my VIP day, rather than having all this shit to process, we got to create a whole program together. And I'm so excited to bring this program to you guys. I feel really lit up by it, really inspired by it. It is for single people. I'm not going to share much more yet because we're going to announce it soon, but it is for single people who really want to embody their most connected, powerful single selves. And it's going to be coming very, very soon. 
And in the meantime, if you are ready to dive in, I still have my course, The Secure Entrepreneur. It's currently at the price of four for four. It's going to be going up. So if you have been eyeing it, this is the time to jump in. It is for entrepreneurs who want to release that anxious attachment in relating to their business, who want to release control, people pleasing, you know, fear around raising your prices, fear around creating something or showing up just really wanting to show up as your most adult, powerful self and not let your inner child run your business. So head to the link in my Instagram bio to learn more about that. We also have a community group in Kajabi where I'm there with you guys answering any questions and you have it forever. So when I add updates to the course, you get those as well. And then my co-leader Anna and I are enrolling for Real Men Heal round three, which will be starting late August, early September. So if you are a man who wants to do this deep nervous system healing work, heal your attachment wounding, build a life beyond your wildest dreams, this is the group for you. It, it is a small group of men. We take no more than like four to six. We like to keep it really small. So each man gets the intention and the attunement that they need and deserve. And then my next round of come home to yourself, my four month group for anxiously attached women will be launching this fall, like October, November, not sure exactly when yet, but I am doing discovery hauls for those as well. So DM me on the Instagram land. If you need anything at all, if you have any questions, if you're ready to deep dive into this work and you want to discuss which container would be right for you, I am here and available for you. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love you all so, so much and take time to come home to yourself and choose you every day. Even when it feels terrifying, you are safe to choose you. All right, guys, I will see you next week for morning tea. I love you all so much and I will see you soon.